Okay, welcome back to the second part of the Schubert seminar. Uh, Wei Hong uh, will continue her talk on quantum K theory on incidence varieties. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, yeah, let's let's start talking about uh, actually quantum K theory. So uh, these K theoretic Gromov-Witten invariants can be packaged into the structure of a ring called the quantum K-theory ring. If you know quantum cohomology, this is the K-theoretic generalization of it. The quantum K-theory ring of X is an algebra over this formal power series ring, where we use powers of the formal variables Q1 and Q2 to keep track of the components of the degree. Schubert class form a basis for the quantum K theory ring of X over this power series ring. Um, yeah, just like in quantum cohomology, Schubert classes form a basis. Knowing the, all, all the K theoretic gromov witten invariants is equivalent to knowing how to multiply in the quantum K theory ring. Although some combinatorics needs to be worked out to go from one to the other. All of these work T equivariantly. Um, in order to state our formulas in a simple form, we're going to simplify the notation for a power of Q times an opposite Schubert class by reversing the reduction mod N process to get an element in WP tilde from the degree and the Schubert class. So uh, this element lives in the quant uh, equivariant quantum K-theory ring of X localized at the Q variables because it is fine to allow um, negative components in the degree. Finally, for an integer i, we will write epsilon i for the character epsilon i bar. We have this equivariant Chevalet formula, which tells us how to multiply a Schubert class and a Schubert divisor class. Again, uh, these indices live in WP tilde, so the Q, Q, parameter, Q variables are implicit in the formula. The non-equivariant case was worked out independently in Rosette's thesis, and a formula for two-step varieties, two-step flat varieties, is in the second version of Kuno, Leonard, Naito, and Sugaki, which was posted on the archive a few days before my paper. In Schubert calculus, we are often in the situation where we have a natural basis given by Schubert varieties for some ring. When we multiply two basis elements, we can expand it as a linear combination of basis elements. And the coefficients in the expansion are called structure constants. Because things are so nice, we often expect the signs of the structure constants to alternate with the co-dimensions of the Schubert varieties. This has been proved in various generalities and conjectured in other cases. In our case, some structure constants can be read out directly from our formula, and their signs are exactly as expected. Here, the uh, L of U is the length of U considered as a vial group element. It's also equal to the co-dimension of the opposite Schubert variety, XU. This integral is equal to the degree of Q to the D in the quantum cohomology ring of X, where there is a grading. A 
a result of cattle implies that the projection from X to the projective space induces a ring homomorphism from the equivariant quantum K theory ring of X to that of the projective space. Using this ring homomorphism and our equivariant Chevalet formula, we can recover a known Chevalet formula for the equivariant quantum K theory ring of the projective space. This was a result of my academic brother, Zhu Wang Chang. In the non equivariant case, I was able to obtain a little bit Richardson rule, which tells us how to multiply two arbitrary Schubert classes. Here, chi of i greater than j is equal to one when i is greater than j and zero when i is smaller than j. This formula makes sense because when this inequality holds, x is never congruent to y mod n. And when the opposite inequality holds, x is never congruent to y minus one or y minus two. This guarantees that in each case, the indices on the right-hand side actually live in WP tilde. The subtle point is that the converse here is not true. And again, the Q parameters are implicit in this formula. Let's see some examples when n is equal to five. The first two examples are of the first case where we get one term. And the last two examples are, are of the second case where we get three terms. Let's compute this example in detail. It's the product of a co-dimension four Schubert class with a point class. According to our formula, we need to compute X equals two plus five minus one, which is six, and Y equals one plus one minus five, which is minus three. Then we need to check which of the two inequalities hold. So we do x minus y equals nine. And because two is greater than one, five is greater than one. On the right-hand side, we have five times one plus one, which is 10. Since nine is smaller than 10, we are in the first case. So we just get the single term O six minus three. Doing reduction mod five gives us the Schubert class O one two and the degree one one because we subtracted five from six to get one and added five to minus three to get two. And again, um, the structure constants in our little with Richardson rule have expected signs. People have also studied the powers of Q that appear with non-zero coefficients in the product of two Schubert classes. For example, it's known that for all G mod P, there is always a unique minimal power of Q corresponding to the smallest degree of a stable curve connecting opposite Schubert varieties. In our case, we have that um, the powers of Q that appear always form an interval between a unique minimal degree and a unique maximal degree. Of course, not much can go wrong in our case because the highest degree degree that we could possibly get is one one. 
using Cattle's ring homomorphism and our Littlewood Richardson rule, we can recover a known Littlewood Richardson rule for the quantum K theory ring of the projective space. This is a special case of Buk and Mihalchi's Kiri rule for the Grassmannian. Now, let me say a little bit about um, the proof of the geometric result. Recall that we want to show the general fiber of this restricted EV3 is rationally connected. Note that this general fiber is a three-point Gromov-Witten variety consisting of maps with the mark point sent to a Schubert variety and opposite Schubert divisor and some fixed point that is general in this two-point curve neighborhood. Our first ingredient is a result of Graeber Harris star, which says that given a dominant morphism of complete complex irreducible varieties, if the target and the general fiber are both rationally connected, then the source is rationally connected. On the other hand, given a stable map to X, we can compose it with the projection to get a map to the projective space. If the original map has degree D equals D1, D2, then the composition will have degree D1, except that we may need to collapse some components of the source curve to make the composition stable. A result of Barron and Manin says that doing this actually gives us a morphism from the moduli space of degree D maps with target X to the moduli space of degree D1 maps with target the projective space. We can restrict this morphism to the three point gromov witten variety, which we want to show is rationally connected. A point in this gromov witten variety is a map with the mark point sent to the Schubert variety, the Schubert divisor, and the fixed point. Therefore, composing with the projection will give us a map to the projective space with the mark points sent to the projection of the Schubert variety, the projection of the Schubert divisor, and the projection of the point. In other words, the target of the restriction is this three-point Gromov-Witten variety for the projective space. It's not hard to show that both the target and the general fiber of this restriction are rational. In fact, they are both parametrized by sections of line bundles. Now, if we can also show that this map is surjective and the source is irreducible, then we can apply Graeber Harris star to draw our conclusion. But we need to be a little careful because this map is not surjective in general. In fact, it can happen that the target has higher dimension than the source. What we can prove instead is that if D1 is the smaller of the two components of the degree, then this restriction is indeed surjective. Fortunately, we can always reduce to this case because there is an involution of X given by swapping the two projective spaces and relabeling the coordinates. This involution swaps the two divisors and the two components of the degree. And finally, with some work, we can also show the source is irreducible. So we are done by Graeber Harris star. Now, uh, what about other type A flag 
varieties. What can we say about their um, quantum K theory ring? Well, uh, for the full flag variety FLN, where the sequence of A's is the full sequence from one to N minus one, we have this known Chevalet formula, which expresses the product of a Schubert class with a Schubert divisor class as an al alternating sum over non-empty paths in the quantum A Bruja graph. This formula was first proved by Leonard and Maino for multiplying quantum growth in the polynomials. And later, Leonard, Naito, and Sagaki proved that quantum growth in the polynomials represent Schubert classes. So combining these two results give us uh, this theorem. Now, what are uh, quantum Bruja graphs or quantum A Bruja graphs? Well, a quantum Bruja graph is a directed graph on the symmetric group with edges labeled by pairs i, j, such that i is smaller than j. Each such pair corresponds to a transposition t, i, j, which swaps i and j. Each edge in the quantum Bruja graph carries a weight there is an edge between two permutations if they differ by a transposition tij and either their lengths differ by one or their lengths differ by the length of the transposition. In the first case, the edge points towards the longer permutation and carries weight one. In the second case, the edge points towards the shorter permutation and carries weight this product of Q variables. So as an example, let's draw the quantum Bruja graph for S3. We have vertices 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, 3, 1, 3, 2, 2, 3, 1, 3, 1, 2, and 3, 2, 1. The first type of edges point upwards, and we have these. The second type of edges point downwards, and we have these. The edge from 321 to 231 carries weight Q1, for example, because we're swapping the first two numbers. And similarly, the edge from 231 to 213 carries weight Q2, and the edge in the middle from 321 to 123 carries weight Q1 times Q2 because we are swapping the first and the third numbers. We'll work with paths in the quantum Bruja graph. For example, here we have a path following this edge, this edge, and this edge. The weight of a path is simply the product of the weights of its edges. So this particular path carries weight Q1 times Q2 times one. This example is for S3, but for us, the symmetric group will be the infinite symmetric group. And everything else is the same. Uh, we'll, we'll use a subgraph of the quantum Bruja graph called the quantum A Bruja graph, whose edges consisting of pairs such that the I is at most A and the J is greater than A. And finally, we will, we will give the set of edges in the quantum Bruja graph a total order uh, using this definition. It's just a variant of the lexicon 
echographic order. So uh, let's revisit this theorem. So we see that in each summand, um, each summand corresponds to a non-empty path path in the quantum Abruha graph. And the permutation at the end of that path gives us a Schubert class. The weight of that path gives us a product of Qs, and the length of that path determines the sign. Using um, Cattle's ring homomorphism, we can, we can get a formula for the quantum K-theory ring of a partial flat variety, but it will have cancellations. It's natural to suspect that, in general, we don't need to sum over all of these paths, but rather um, we just need to sum over paths satisfying some additional conditions depending on the A's. And when we do that, we can actually get a cancellation-free formula. And this is exactly my conjecture, which says that we need to impose these three additional conditions on the paths. Note that these conditions depend on the A's, where we set A0 to be 0 and A m plus 1 to be n. In the case of the full flat variety, these conditions become vacuous. So we, we recover the theorem on the previous slide. And this conjecture has been verified by my computer program um, for m up to 4 and n up to 8. Um, yeah, this is everything I wanted to say. Thank you very much for your attention and happy Pi Day. Thank you very much.